Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. And today I have a very, very awesome blade to share with you guys. This is the Brian Nadeau. You can see his maker's mark right there. Brian Nadeau or Sharp by Design, which is his company, Mini Typhoon. These were up for order uh, earlier in the year and I was able to get in on this particular run. If you really love this and you really want one, what I would do is make sure you're following Brian over on Instagram and checking out his website, reach out to him because he's in the process of making these right now and you may be lucky enough to pick up one that someone else backs out on. Now it sucks when someone backs out but I know financial things happen. Uh, but someone else's loss may be your gain if you really want to get a hold of one of these. He'll also have a few at different blade shows and stuff like that. Uh, or you can check the secondary market where you may be lucky enough to score one there as well. All right. So, and the nice thing about that is these are, as a custom knife, these are fairly affordable. And, and that's one other note I want to make before we get into this knife. Uh, Brian does great work. He's won tons of awards. He's well respected. And yet... His knives remain fairly affordable, which I've got to give him a lot of credit for. Most guys, the more notoriety they get, the more well-known they are, the higher the prices go. And, you know, I, I understand that, I think, but I, I've got to say I really appreciate Brian putting these knives out there for a price that, although expensive, is not completely out of the realm of possibility for uh, a lot of enthusiasts. So got to give him some credit for doing that. Finally, let's get to the actual specs on this knife and all the things that uh, I like about it. Keep in the back of your mind, guys, that this is a custom knife. So that means some of the things that are done here won't be the same uh, across the board because there'll be various options that are available. So size and weight. Now this is going to be pretty consistent, but this knife is eight inches overall. The blade is three and a half inches and the handle is four and a half inches. Uh, really, really nice EDC size on that. Uh, very, very carryable knife. That's mostly what we're talking about when we get to this size and weight. Uh, this knife carries really, really comfortably at 4.3 ounces, which is not going to be too heavy for pretty well anybody and is a really nice weight for a full titanium frame lock, right? We got to give some credit there. Uh, it's a little over half an inch thick, so it carry. it's a little bulky, but certainly not unwieldy or impossible to carry. And I definitely, uh, you know, when I was putting this, when I was picking my options, if you will, I was thinking this would be a great sort of semi-gentleman's knife where I could carry this in a pair of dress pants or something like that and it not be too heavy or, you know, swinging around like I've got an anvil on the side of my leg. Uh, so really, really nice carry knife, really great size for EDC and even for gentleman's carry. Blade on this guy is S90V, which is a very, very hard steel, good, good corrosion resistance. I mean, this edge is going to be there pretty much forever. Uh, and I don't mind that, you know, on a knife like this that's kind of special and kind of interesting, it's, neat to, it's nice to have a fairly select steel. Now, it's not for the faint of heart, but if you've got a good sharpening setup, you shouldn't have any issues. And of course, you could always send it back to Brian and he'd take care of you for with that. Uh, I went with the drop point. There's also a, a Tanto, an American Tanto, um, or an American Tanto, a Japanese Tanto, a clip point, and then this drop point. You could do a fuller on here, and I toyed with that idea, but ultimately decided against it. I thought it would make the knife a little too busy. I did, however, go with the hand rubbed satin flats, which is really, really attractive, and then the blasted bevels. Uh, that was just the standard way of doing it. Uh, nice, nice edge geometry here. You can see by how small that secondary bevel is that you don't have a lot of material here behind the edge. So this knife cuts really, really well. Uh, and I think Brian has done a great job of just balancing uh, the the, the trade-off that exists between a knife that cuts and slices really well and a knife that's that's very durable. Notice how much material gets all the way out here to the tip. It's good and thick. It, it definitely feels hefty and reliable and yet he's got a nice thin edge geometry so it still slices really well. So I've got to say I really really like this blade. Uh, the other thing is great job on the plunge grind. It doesn't interfere. You don't get that smile that you often get with knives back here. This is cut out just enough. And you can see a little bit of the mach machining there as it comes down, but that's not really a deal 
uh, or not really an issue for me. Nice top swedge, fine jimping, overall a really, really well done, really, really versatile blade, which is what I really like is that versatility. Uh, in terms of lockup and deployment, uh, we have, of course, a flipper knife, and it is flipper only. You have really no access to the blade. It's sort of a Quaken style blade, right? So the blade totally vanishes into the handle there. Uh, the flipper, though, works really, really nicely. It is on bearings, and of course, it's a titanium frame lock. Uh, let's first of all take a look at how that lock works. That's one of the cool things about this knife. I love how Brian has cut it off here, and then the lock extends up under the handle creating an over travel stop just by the way it's constructed. All right, and that's sort of a theme for this knife. You'll see that a lot of things are really, really well thought out and just really elegant and simple. If you look here, uh, let's see, how am I gonna do this? I guess we'll leave it open. And I think if I flip it this way, you'll be able to see it better. There we go, look at that. Inside there, you can see that there's not a typical detent ball. Instead, it's what's called a detent ramp. And if I, hold on. If I unlock this, notice how, there we go, the blade is just past the lock face, but it still slides really nicely because it just ramps onto that little detent piece, I guess, and <clears throat> is a really, really nice way of getting something done that can often be a problem. How many times have you had a knife where, you know, if you don't get it past the detent ball, it kind of gets stuck there? So this is a really nice solution to that problem, and it is unique to Brian's work. Uh, and inside you can see that you've got that little sort of cliff there, that ledge that does create the detent when the blade is closed. All right, so again, really, really nicely done. Everything very well thought out, very simple. So you've got the lock bar insert that kind of becomes the extension of the lock bar. And then just the way it's designed, you've got a natural over travel, over -travel stop uh, so all of that is really, really well done. The action on the knife is really, really nice. And again, let's talk about user comfort and the uh, flipper tab. Now this looks really sharp and you go, man, that thing is gonna wear out your fingers. But the reality is the way the knife naturally flips is for you to just put your finger here. <laughs> Whoops, I banged into the tripod there. Uh, I was trying to give you a nice close up. So let's turn the knife this way a little bit. <laughs> uh, the way the knife naturally works is your, your finger just nicely sits on that ramp, which is perfectly contoured for a human finger and the knife deploys really well with sort of a light switch motion. Again, guys, I've got to say I really love that. It's a bit of a pet peeve of mine when makers, production knives, whatever else, do a flipper tab that is extremely uncomfortable for the human finger. And I'm like, you know what's gonna happen here, so why not just accommodate the fact that someone's gonna to have to push on this to deploy the knife? And so I've gotta give Brian credit for doing that. And overall, the biggest thing to me that stands out about the, the lockup, the deployment, the action on this knife is, let me adjust my tripod just a little bit after hitting it there, is that everything is just comfortable and functional, right? The, it just fits your finger the way you want it to. The detent is just right. The lock bar is the tension is very comfortable. When you go to close the knife, you know, nothing is, is problematic. Nothing is awkward. Nothing is difficult. And, and, you know, after having a couple knives recently where, you know, it's a bit of a pain in the neck to unlock, it's just a joy to be reminded of how a good knife is supposed to, to function here, where everything just does what it's supposed to do easily, naturally, and comfortably. And so, yeah, total, you know, full points on lockup and deployment, uh, absolutely comfortable and, uh, functional. Let's talk about the handle next, okay? So the first thing I wanna say is you do get to pick a bunch of options. So if you haven't seen it, I will put in the end credits my video, my, my first impressions video where I went through the whole ordering process. I love the way Brian has done that. But you do get to pick, of course, the color. You get to pick how, what kind of handle style you want. I went with the aspirated handle and I also went with the milled out. So you can see that there's milling there to lighten up the knife. There's also milling down here, okay, and on the lock side as well. So this knife has been heavily milled out to save weight, which is why it got down to that 4.3 ounces. I also love the fact that you can see through the knife. There's just something cool about watching the blade kind of come into the little windows there 
and then close. That is really, really attractive. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of, you know, the construction choices that I made, I definitely favored trying to make this a lightweight, EDC gentleman style knife. I love the way, this is just in general, I love the, the relationship between sort of the, the shiny satin finish and the bronze. So it was a pretty obvious choice what colors I wanted to go with. Uh, again, I, I, you know, it's, it's, you can do anodized hardware, but I thought of what colors would fit well with the bronze and I just thought, you know what, I think the silver would look the best. Uh, and I really think I made the right choice there. Uh, you also get to pick the jimping on the backspacer and once again I went with the fine jimping. And then the biggest, one of the coolest features is the way that this is a very open design and yet it's a backspacer. Normally, you know, you hear me saying, well, it's backspacer construction so it's not very open, but Brian's done a nice job of combining both a very strong, secure construction, okay, there are locating points on this backspacer, uh, as well as giving you a very open knife that's easy to clean and maintain. Then, Let's talk about the clip. Now the clip location is something that a lot of people have complained about. They would like it to be a little further up. The problem with that is it would be difficult. It may not be impossible and, and maybe uh, Brian, if you'd like to weigh in here in the comments, that would be helpful or if you if there's somewhere else. By the way, if someone knows where there's a discussion about this, uh, point it out for us as well. But yeah, maybe we could move up here just a little bit and it would make the knife feel a little more balanced in its look, okay? That's the only thing is as you look at visually the knife, it kind of feels like the clip is, is too low. Uh, in terms of its function, it's absolutely phenomenal. And in terms of the design, once again, it's very simple, but very cool. Okay, so the way this is done is there's a cutout here in the handle, and this has been slid down through the handle, wrapped around, and then it fits under that backspacer and locks in. So there's no screws holding this in place. It's just held in place by the construction of the knife itself. And I've gotta say, that is really, really interesting and very cool. All right, so that's how the clip works. In terms of its function, it goes in and out of pocket really well. It was a bit stiff when I first got the knife, but I've carried this quite a lot and it has kind of worked in just a little. All right, so that's the handle construction. Again, very, very well done. And, and let's be honest, guys, with a custom knife, you do expect that, and Brian has absolutely delivered. So finally, let's go ahead and do some comparisons. Uh, I should have had a pair of two here. Maybe I've got one within reach. Uh, so for size comparison, I'll put in a pair of two. You can see that it's just a little smaller than the pair of two, but it does have more cutting edge, which I definitely like. Uh, otherwise though, let's stick to knives for this part that are a little more comparable. And this is one of the cool things about this knife, guys. I've got some high-end production knives here that are gonna be similar. And <clears throat> uh, let's go ahead and start with the Wii 604, another Quaken style blade. Uh, obviously the 604 is, is around half the price of this knife. Still really well made, but it's sort of capturing that same theme, right? The, the Quaken style. And listen, this is one of the ways, Wii knives are really, really good, okay? They're, they're you know, the level of quality is right up there, and I really appreciate that. However, all you have to do is handle this knife, open it, close it a couple of times, and you realize that we're playing in two different ballparks with these two knives, okay? So uh, one of the reasons I brought this in is because we all know Wii's reputation, how to, what a great job they do. Uh, here's the 618 as well, by the way. Since these are all sort of Quaken style knives, I thought they'd make a nice comparison. <clears throat> Um, and although the Wii knives are very good, as soon as you pick this knife up, you right away go, okay, we're not quite playing in the same league, all right? And so that's, that's worth noticing. <clears throat> but those are, of course, some other sort of high-end Quaken style blades. Uh, another knife that I've got, whoops. Another knife that I've got that I wanna go ahead and put in here is the Olamic uh, Swish. And again, very nice knife. Notice the similar coloration. I got to pick the colors on both of these, so uh, it does give away my preferences just a little bit. Uh, the Swish is, is considerably bigger, okay? Uh, but this is a mid-tech knife, all right? And it's important to notice that these cost very, very close to the same price. So here you have a mid-tech or even high-end production, depending on how you wanna qualify it, and a full custom knife, and you're getting the full custom for only a little bit more than, <clears throat> than the mid-tech. 
Uh, let's see what else have we got here. Here's another, you know, well-known high-end production knife. This is the XM18. Again, a little bit bigger, but not a whole lot. Cutting edge is very similar once again. Uh, but, but again, we have to point out that the price point on these is fairly close, even though one is a production knife and one <coughs> is a custom. Finally, my Riot Torrent. And again, the quality on this guy is about really the, the feel and the, the overall just impression of perfection that, that is given. This, of all the knives that I've shown you, this guy is the closest. Maybe, maybe the Swift is pretty close as well. <clears throat> uh, Swish, I'm sorry. Uh, but again, you know, this guy is going to be, you know, close to 400 bucks. I think they were 375 and now maybe they're 325 But still, uh, you know, for a production knife, that's pretty steep. And again, you're not paying a whole lot more to get into a full custom with the Mini Typhoon. So those are the comparisons I've got for you. I didn't bring the Curtis, even though it's another full custom, because it's just so, so big. And, and it, it, they don't really compare well at all. All right. So guys, in conclusion... The Mini Fight Typhoon is a great option if you want a custom knife that you, one, would actually want to use, that you don't feel like you just have to lock in a safe somewhere, two, that is just really well done. Here you're getting a full custom knife from a, from a very reputable, award-winning maker for an reasonably affordable price when it comes to custom knives. The quality, the fit and finish, the attention to detail, and the usability are absolutely maxed out on this knife. <clears throat> and so in terms of, you know, just a great everyday carry knife, uh, a custom that is more accessible, I think this is a great, great knife. Now I understand that at the price point, it's not going to be for everybody. And certainly at this point, it's going to be a little tough to get your hands on one. But if you can, and if you're lucky enough, uh, you are not going to go wrong with a mini Typhoon. Thanks for watching. Brian, if you're watching, keep up the great work. Super, super impressed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and go ahead and hit the notification button as well since YouTube needs you to click two buttons to see my videos instead of just one. And we'll talk to you later.